50 years ago, Japan invaded Korea. And the Koreans built these ships to drive the Japanese out, the invaders out. If you notice, the spikes on the top are so that people can't swim over and jump on the ship. That's not how they fight. The ship has uh, cannons. The cannons were very small, though, and a ma major activity of fighting where they fought on these ships was with bows and arrows. Mm -hmm. The thin area above the cannons would actually open up and the, the archers would work from that area. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Japanese were fighting with bows and arrows also. Notice the uh, figurehead, the dragon. I do. Now, they under we understand that they would actually have a fire in the dragon's mouth. And it would uh, be intimidating to the enemy. You yeah, see this fire eating dragon. If I saw something like that with a big dragon head with fire, I'd probably yeah, go the other way. It turns out also that this uh, they would burn things that would make a lot of smoke as well. And this is an example of one of the very earliest smoke screens that was used as, uh, for, for ships of the day. Now, now as far as um, scale wise, I mean, this looks like it could have been a really big ship, including that dragon head. Uh, I mean, how, how big was this, this ship? We understand the ship was about 100 feet long. Wow, okay. So, by the way, if you happen to be at the uh, Korean Naval Academy, I don't know the city that it's in, but at the Korean Naval Academy, they have a full-size replica of one of these that you go for. Is that right? Yep. Wow. The Koreans are very proud of the history of these boats, and, and they have a lot of background on them. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. But <laughs> well, we have ships from other areas, uh, the two here are French. This is a German ship, a very famous World War I ship. And down here we have a French galley. Well, this is probably a, a kind of ship that Louis XIV might have sailed on sand. Uh, the French had many galleys like this, but this is decorated to be the king's galley, as you can see. Yeah. Now, forgive me for not really knowing what that means, but what is it when you say galley? What does that refer to? Well, in terms of galley, most of them are the type of ship like this that can be rowed. We'll see some older uh, Roman ships like this. We, we remember those biremes and triremes, but we refer to these ones that are rowed like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I can't help but notice this painting here. It is just stunning. It's just beautiful, especially the, the ship here with the three rows of guns. I mean, tell us a little bit about this one. Okay. This, this, I, I'm glad you asked about that because this, this tells a wonderful story. The, in the 1600s, see if I've got my dates right. Uh, yeah, 1672, there was a battle called the Battle of Seoul Bay. It was on the east coast of England, and the British were fighting the Dutch at that time. The, the battle raid waged on for a couple of days, and it turned out to be a draw. Mm -hmm. The English went home, the Dutch went home. Mm -hmm. This scene is not the battle scene. Mm -hmm. This is the scene when the, the English have come home, the king is coming out to review the fleet. The ship here is the King's Yacht. Uh, it's Charles II at the time. Okay. Now we, we can see that the King has been rowed from this yacht over to this ship. We know that because his flag is flying at the mast and see it's been lowered on his yacht. Wow. So we know the King is aboard the ship. The gunfire though, the, the smoke that you're seeing, uh, salutes to the King. Oh, okay. Interestingly enough, these two little white boats here uh, were actually designed by King Charles II. He was quite a sailor. Mm. And if you go to Portsmouth, England, where you see a wonderful maritime museum, yeah. they actually have one of those boats hanging in the ceiling. Is that right? So a lot is going on in this painting. Wow. I, I can tell you that this was painted by uh, John Dinsdale, a famous American artist. Mm -hmm. And he actually painted it by copying the original was, that was painted at the time of the event. Mm -hmm. uh, he did a wonderful job copying it. We're told that the original actually has been destroyed, and we don't, we don't know what the real story is on that, but we're lucky to have this right now. Now, now this, you know, I, I think there's another question is, when scenes like this was painted, was this based on eyewitness account, or was it based on someone saying, hey, this was here, this was here, and this is going on over there. How, how did they come to even um, create such a scene? Well, that's really difficult to say. I, I know this, but assuming this was in the Thames at some point, uh, the Thames is not a very wide area, and I could I could certainly picture an artist sitting in Greenwich or 
Woolwich or any of the cities along the Thames and actually seeing this map, maybe sketching it and then going home and, and doing the painting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all conjecture, but um, I, I don't think you would have any trouble getting to see this scene. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And 